Hey guys, t -Bull here. Got a Benson replay for you today. It's on the map fault line domination mode. I uh, just want to always take a quick look, especially if you're playing these high tier destroyers. Uh, you want to check the enemy lineup. You're checking for two things. Radar ships. Currently we got Indianapolis, Atlanta, and Baltimore. You need to take note of them and A, see if they're there, and B, see how many they are. Um, you do really have to keep an eye out for them. Either help take them out or stay the heck away from them because they can wreck you very quickly. You also want to check enemy destroyer lineup just to see who you're potentially running, especially domination mode where you're more likely to have encounters uh, right off the bat. Now, domination mode, that's kind of where the USN destroyers shine. They're made to take uh, these caps and just kind of get in there and hold off. They can all duel enemy destroyers and they can cause a lot of problems for pretty much any class of ship as we'll see in this game. Things you want to be careful of right off the bat. You can basically outduel an enemy destroyer one on one, you know, taking into account or not taking into account skill and all that, but just looking at the ship on paper, you can basically take a destroyer one on one. But if they have supporting fire behind them and you're kind of exposed in the middle, you might want to consider disengaging from that fight. That's a quick way to get eliminated pretty quickly. Now here we see we got someone in cap and C. There's two points you can kind of do it stealthily. Those image that gap in between the islands, or a lot of times uh, ships will sit right in the corner like this guy is doing right here. Now this is a problem. If you're playing a Japanese destroyer and you run into a USN destroyer right off the bat, you need to pop your smoke and get out of here. Notwithstanding the fact that I can't <laughs> hit the broad side of a barn, this is probably my warm-up game whenever I play this, but. Now that I'm dialing in my shots, I mean these, you got five guns that fire very quickly against, uh, what is this thing, I think four guns if I remember off the top of my head. And this guy's trying to torpedo me, that's not the right move, you need to disengage, you can either smoke up and fight back with guns, the higher tier Japanese destroyers actually have decent guns, but not shooting, not smoking, turning to drop torpedoes it might work occasionally but against a player who can aim semi-competently in these the, the usn destroyers just pump out shells i mean the dpm is extremely high so just not shooting back is not the right play i guess to my point but it's a very dangerous situation the japanese destroyers all of the ships we have right now are kind of the least uh, equipped to deal with a USN destroyer rushing it right out the bat, so not much he could have done except for probably pop smoke, disengage, maybe drop some torpedoes as he's running away trying to catch me chasing him. So now I'm just finishing up the cap here and then I'm looking at the map. I'm seeing we got this cruiser here and I see I'm trying to consider how can I get at the broad side of that thing. I can either go through that gap we were talking about earlier, or I can kind of go around. That's the play I'm going to do here. Uh, that's an accidental smoke. That was a fat finger there. i just trying to hit the speed boost, but sometimes if you kind of hit your D-pad a little incorrectly, then you can actually hit that smokes too. So that, that, was, an in, that was a mistake. But then smokes are actually very valuable in these USN destroyers, so... <laughs> Not something you want to get in the habit of, but we are able to sneak up on this Atlanta here. Close range, we got the AP loaded. He's not looking at me. Now we're just going to pop him, siddle, siddle, siddle. Now I assume he's aimed down the sights, kind of doing whatever he's doing, which is why I can get away with this play here. You do have to be very careful with these going close quarters with the Atlanta. And I do switch to HE for that last salvo there because the angle is getting steep. But if you close in on those Atlantas, Keep in mind that they probably have, uh, it's either three or four guns that are permanently pointed on, like forward on each side of the ship. So had he been kind of aware or not as distracted as he was, he could have just swung the camera around very quickly and then popped me rapidly. Those salvos coming off the Atlanta are firing just as quick as my guns are. And there's a lot more of them, so he could have easily ended my game very quickly. So a risky play, but we're able to pull it off. 
And despite kind of being left to our own devices by our team right off the bat on that right spawn, uh, we're doing good on these one-on-one -on -one engagements. So never underestimate these American destroyers one-on-one -on -one if you're facing them. So that's two ships down, and now we're just going to move into B. Again, like I talked about earlier, these USN destroyers are just kind of made for taking caps and domination mode. That's This is the strongest game mode for them. The cap, capture the base, they're a little less effective just because the positions that the enemy ships are going to be in are a little less predictable. Or domination, you're normally going to have destroyers kind of rushing towards the center to meet in the caps, and that's an advantageous situation for these destroyers. Um, but if, you know, capture the base, it's a little more haphazard, the deployment in, in general. These are kind of just rules of thumb, of course. But that's why, I, in my mind, they're a little less effective in that game mode. So now, I don't remember if I... Let's focus on the fact that I don't have a smoke here, but that's extremely important. When you're when you're on the reload of your smoke with the USN destroyers, you kind of resist the urge. I mean, you can start firing at distance because your ships are very um, nimble and you can actually dodge shots at length at range very well. But if you're going to kind of get into the thick of things like I'm doing here, I'm trying to get into a position where. I can kind of just plant myself and then just bomb on these guys. But I don't have the smokes to do it. So what I'm doing right now is just finishing up the cap. I'm trying to keep out of range of this Colorado so he doesn't detect me. We'll get some torpedoes in the water. See if we can get a strike to hit him. And then by the time that's done, my smoke should be about ready to go. And then we can go on with uh, other things. But... The Colorado's kind of angling in a little bit. He crosses into my detection range. And now that I'm spotted and I don't really have a way to disengage, I don't know why he's slammed on the brakes there. I'm, that's why I'm kind of thinking I forgot that I used my smoke. Because it's a very bizarre play to make otherwise. But we are able to set a fire now. Setting a fire as well, torpedoes are in the, wa the water is a very nice play if they use the damage control party. Um, then when the torpedoes hit the floods, they can't repair them. You can also do the mirror play where you have the torpedo strike, the flood start, and then you're going to assume, you know, if you see flood ribbons achieved on your top right screen, you're just going to assume that they use the damage control party. Then if you can start one or two or three fires quickly, you can often just disengage that ship and let it die while it is unable to repair it or put out the fires for about a minute. So you always want to be kind of using the torpedoes and the HE shells synergistically there in those situations. That, that's kind of, you know, the one of the more deadly uh, plays you can make with the destroyer. Now we do have our smoke ready and we deploy it. And that's what I'm just saying here. If you can just nestle in here, I'm close enough to this Colorado where even if he turns tail and runs, I'm still going to be within range, or he's going to be within range of my guns for a long time. And you're going to see here just uh, how potent these guns are. You know, they're firing every, what, three seconds, give or take. Uh, we're starting fires. Got another round of torpedoes in the water. He does a fairly, he does about as good of a job as you can avoiding these torpedoes. I think he understands what's likely going on here. He's got a destroyer that parked close to him, smoked up, and is lighting fires. So he just turns away from me. I like that play there. And, you know, there's... I think just because of the spreads were kind of overlapped, I don't know if he could have completely avoided them. Looks like maybe it would have been a fair amount of luck and a fair amount of skill combined, in my opinion. But we only hit him with one torpedo. But now we got a uh, we got a flood and multiple fires again in this guy. You'll see we're taking these guys, you know, down from very high amounts of HP to wrestle them to the ground, like a cheetah in the savanna or the Sahara or whatever. <laughs> so uh, never underestimate these USN destroyers. The Benson, the Benson's kind of the first one in the line where the torpedoes are actually able to be deployed in a stealthy manner. Prior to that, all the detection radiuses are, uh, they're 
larger than the actual range of the torpedoes, which kind of forces you to focus on the guns. I think that's why they do that. So I hope that video was enjoyable for you. If you did like it, please hit the thumbs up. If new to the channel, consider subscribing. Questions, comments on the Benson, leave them below. And we'll see you all later. Alright, peace.